So speaking of memory safety, in the previous segment, we were talking about Google writing AI test suites to test our code. But why would you want to test your code? Well, it turns out writing in C and C++ give you just enough tooling, but hide just enough of the inner workings of the hardware to allow you to create very memory unsafe things. Um, if you ever heard buffer overflow, buffer yeah. underflow, any kind of memory safety, any kind of flaw in any kind of software, that's exactly the kind of thing, exactly the kind of tooling that you get with a C and a C++. And oh yeah, uh, the kernel written all, well, mostly in yeah, quite a lot. C. And you know, yeah, one C. of the most popular types of flaws to come out over on MITRE and uh, all of the CS, uh, CVE um, websites is, yeah, you guessed it, memory, memory insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you do about that? I don't know. There's a call to fix it. And, uh, you know, the uh, computer programmer types, they got, they got a plan. Yeah. And, well, we've, we've heard a lot of rabble about Rust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rust is Rust is a good example of uh, memory safe uh, because of the way it gets compiled, right? Yeah, and little little do some folks know uh, Python. <laughs> Python yeah, is interestingly, actually yeah. memory safe. You're you're far enough away from the hard hardware that you can't accidentally point to uh, not your memory <laughs> and accidentally overwrite it. Yeah, Python's got its other woes. It's not necessarily the most performant, but it is memory safe. That's true. Uh, you can you can go a long ways to making it uh, to making it more performant, but you can it ain't, you can it help ain't... it, but it's not the best. Yeah, it yeah. ain't gonna be C performant. Uh, so right, but that's one of the things that we've heard a whole heck of a lot about, and we talked about a couple episodes ago. Um, Rust developers having a really, really, really difficult time getting their code upstreamed into the Linux kernel. And luckily, in my opinion, a little too late, but still yeah. I'll take what I can get. Both um, Greg KH came out and, and said, you know, we're hackers. This is what we do. We, we make it work. Uh, and then Linus a little later uh, came out and said similar things, right? Like if Rust it seems yeah. to be the right way to go, then that is just going to be the right way to go. That's and that's the way we we're going yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. So it, it looks like, uh, you know, Rust has made its way in, has gotten the green flag, and we're going to see more and more of it. Uh, and that's good. Yeah, it's it's not going to replace everything. No, definitely not. But it's it's got its place for, for things, especially in user space. Um, you know, to implement some of those drivers and whatnot that, um, you know, that they're writing the Rust stuff in. One thing that is just going to make that additionally inevitable um, is that the paper that we're that we've been kind of alluding to this entire time is is, is called is a paper from uh, Association for Computing Machinery uh, entitled "It Is Time to Standardize Principles and Practices for Software Memory Safety." So there are about 21 authors on this thing, um, and it's an actual list. I am mm -hmm. pretty impressed with the the names that show up on here. Uh, yeah. You've got folks from Microsoft. You've got folks from Google. You've got folks from ARM. You've got plenty of academics on here. Yep. Um, so it, it seems like there's a lot of heavy weight. Behind yeah, the push, it's, it's a who's who in in the you know in the programming space, kind of right. I mean, because you have um, you've got some big names making this push to get memory safe languages being kind of the de facto way that we're looking. Um, you know, convert what you can now, write new code in this kind of thing. Um, yep. And I suppose the ultimate goal here is going to really just be to. I mean, while we can't do it right now. Uh, is going to be a a change, a sea change in all of the uh, in, in everything, everything that we use, just kind of running into uh, being written in memory safe languages. And these um, companies have a huge vested interest in making sure that the oh, Linux kernel 
is also memory safe, right? So just because we say Microsoft doesn't mean that they don't have a huge interest in the Linux kernel because they have WSL. They run Linux inside of Windows for development, right? Both people inside and outside of Microsoft are doing this kind of thing. They use Linux for other tools too, but I mean, right. they, they, they just, they aren't necessarily desktop operating systems, although they have one of those too. Right. Um, um, so, I mean, they definitely have an interest in, in, in this, but I, I will say, you know, some of these cross-platform languages like C++, um, and, and Rust is one of them. Rust is also cross-platform. So, mm -hmm. you know, even in, in Windows and Mac OS, uh, you'll see some of these other languages come up too. Right. So they have an interest from that standpoint as well. Right. Um, and I mean, Azure, uh, I, I forget what the percentage is now, and it's kind of ever fluctuating, but yeah. uh, Microsoft Azure ends up running something to the effect of more than 50% of everything they run in the cloud is Linux and not Microsoft-based. Um, yep. So there's a huge interest there. And then for Google, there's all of their Chromebooks, all of their Android devices, all of their Chromecasts and everything. All the stuff that they have lives on top of a Linux kernel, and it behooves them to make sure that we're not getting hit by this low-hanging, you know, memory. You know, I, I picked out memory from over here. That's really not mine, but I took it anyway so I can read these types of things. Or I accidentally overwrote memory over here, so this other application has now crashed because the memory is unreadable. They have a vested interest in not seeing those kinds of flaws show up so that their stuff doesn't look bad. Right. And ARM, you're seeing all of this stuff, uh, all of these ARM-based whatevers, you're seeing tons of Linux stuff uh, pop up on these things. So there's a huge interest all across, uh, all across the industry to actually bring this stuff to fruition. So memory safety uh, is paramount now. So... Well, I, and I'll tell you one of the incidents uh, somewhat recently, about a year ago now almost, is the uh, the CrowdStrike incident uh, where everybody's, you know, woke up to a blue screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but because that's that's uh, not that like they should have tested it. That was that was a flaw in in the implementation. But the language that that those drivers were written in was C++. And so it might not have happened if we'd have taken care of the language problem in addition right. to the testing and implementation. Um, but I mean, so there's, there's a prime example of something that that's uh, low level um, and needs to be kind of redone in a different way. Right. I, I don't know how many times on the Ubuntu security podcast, I've heard heat buffer overflow or something oh, yeah. like that. Um, it is um, it's, it's insane. <laughs> yep. It is yep. the vast, vast majority of the flaws that we see on on a day to day, which is which is really funny. But the CrowdStrike thing is funny too because uh, I don't think the main problem was memory insecurity. You mentioned it. I mean, the the main problem was testing. Yeah, they to did test. see yeah. if things explode when you apply this particular patch. Right. And I mean, yeah. I, I remember this. I mean, airports were scrambling. I oh, mean, anybody word. that had BitLocker was going through it because you had to go in and like before Microsoft and CrowdStrike. Yeah. Before Microsoft and CrowdStrike came up with a kind of a middle solution, uh, you had to go and manually type in codes to roll things back and fix things up. Um, but yeah, and it was it was ultimately because you didn't test. But deep down the actual problem itself wouldn't yeah, have the flaw happened itself, yeah. yeah yeah wouldn't have happened had you written it in a memory safe language you just wouldn't have seen that yep. type of it, flaw now yeah, but again it's because it had that low level access right to the kernel and it wasn't written in a way that was i mean because if it was actually in user space i your program would have just crashed it wouldn't have crashed well, the whole operating system right but yeah, i think these things really tight to the to the kernel need to be better right 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 safer and yeah. um you know their their argument crosstrike's argument and they're not wrong uh is that you just really can't do this kind of thing no. in you you can't you can't have this type of protection in user well, space you just don't have I the level of that. access for that yeah um 
But well, I agree. Yeah. It's implemented in the right ring, if you will. It just yeah, ring zero. Yeah, it just needed to be safer so that it didn't crash your whole system. <laughs> yeah, it just needed to be tested. <laughs> well, that's uh, right. yep. Yeah. So, um, but that's kind of the idea, right? Like, um, yep. so this this paper is just more about uh, more than uh, about using memory safe languages. It's a broader conversation about being. Um, you know, what the future is going yeah. to look like. Because we, we've got uh, timelines out to 2038, uh, how, how things are, are going to be shaping up. But, yeah. you know, it, it just it just feels very relevant um, because of the recent yeah. thing that happened with the Linux kernel and how much uh, how much of a conversation there was about not letting, not allowing Rust be adjacent yeah. to the kernel. Um, now it just seems like with... It's the right choice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the amount of pool that the that the big names that are showing up on papers like these have, um, and the amount of code that they're going to be uh, upstreaming, it just seems like whether or not Greg Cage and Linus gave it the stamp of approval, it, it's going to move this way anyway. Linus and Greg's hand was going to be forced. Yeah, the big names are going to push push it. You know, yeah. Yeah, so 2018 to 2027, you're you're looking at setting industry best practices. Security critical applications are going to be written in memory safe technologies. From 20 to 28 or 2028 to 2037, um, you're going to be uh, looking at non critical devices um, and then swapping them over to more memory safe languages. Looking at legacy systems and seeing what it's going to take uh, to yep. move them. And then at the end of that kind of thing, um, from 20 2038 to 2047. Um, the the real the real idea there is universal adoption of memory safe languages. So and that's really far out. So I mean, that gives you plenty of time to to pivot. Right, and and plenty of time to come up with that new standard, the standard yeah. that's going to replace all of the old standards forever. Right. I mean, surely that's what this paper is is pointing at. So it's XKCD. 927 if you need to know if you if you need to know which one I'll I'll have it on the screen here but 927 we'll have a look link at that one. to it as well. <laughs> yeah, so we, need, we need another it. standard. I got it. Yep. Right. And I, I suppose <laughs> most everybody listening to this now may have actually already seen that one, but it's worth Probably. it. Go click on the link. Uh he deserves your traffic. But yeah, so they they've identified that that's not going to be how this is. There's there's a line no, in I here don't. That um, uh, under the heading of potential structures for one or more standards or documents, right? It already kind of alludes to the fact that there's going to be more than one. This is not going to be, they're not going to sit here and try to define for you what memory safe language to be using. They have right. multiple in here. Um, and they, they go on to say, it would be premature to try to fix the best structure for the results of this effort. And that really is the the XKCD 927 is really a distillation of this particular sentence because yeah. you can't you can't force it you can try right. uh but then you're going to have 18 competing <laughs> standards exactly. to yep. try and just look at linux uh, uh, uh linux is <laughs> just a competing standard isn't it and yeah. then everything everything underneath that is also still a competing standard <laughs> i know i know yeah yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think it's exciting stuff, and I, I and I'm I'm glad it's been put out there. You know, with the idea of adoption, and it has a good roadmap, and hopefully, people can you know follow the 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 roadmap. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna work out for everybody except for the people that absolutely refuse to write in anything but C and C plus plus. Yeah, right? but you I mean, I mean, everything changes, like. It, it can't stay the same forever. That's just not how computing works. Well, yeah, those, those folks retire. <laughs> well, yeah, they will. I mean, it's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, it's, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Right, so. and yeah, I, I, I really do think that um, it, moving this way is is absolutely inevitable. So um, we'll be there, and it will be a good thing, and we'll live in in a Linux utopia where there's you will never have to hear the word uh, buffer overflow ever ever again. So catch these and other great topics as they unfold on Lemmy, our subreddit, or the news channel on Discord. Um, all of the things that we're that we're talking about now are or will soon be posted to one of those three, all of all of those, not just one, all of those 
three places. Um, so yeah, if you're keeping up with those kinds of things, then you already know what's coming out on the next topic show. But what you don't know is the way that we're going to land on how we feel about these kinds of things. So if you want to know that kind of thing before uh, before the showtime actually happens, then it's time to go and comment and talk a little bit about and yeah. have a little bit of a conversation about some of these things. Um, and then you'll get your kind of your kind of finger on the pulse of what's going to happen in old Linux user space five, whatever. Oh well, I shouldn't say five, whatever, because there will be a next season. There'll be some be sexes six, eventually, and, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you go back and watch this one, then I will be wrong, and you'll be like, You're five? Right. What? <laughs> it's episode eight hundred and five. What are you talking about? Oh, that'd so, be cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's on the horizon. I, I don't plan on quitting, so you know, it's it's in the roadmap. With, with enough time, we'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. But outside of those three places, there's, of course, all the federated places. So Mastodon, yep. we technically have a Pixel Fed. Uh, we just we don't, don't use it. post anything it. there, but yeah. I, I plan on using it um, to post the more imagey, uh, uh, like, video-y stuff. But mm. I also want to be respectful of other people's servers, right? Because I don't own that storage yeah. space. And it's not some venture capital company that owns that where I don't care how much space. I want to give you as much data as I possibly can just to waste your money and time. We want it to but, be worthy you know, of posts. Exactly. Exactly. So... Uh, so you can go find us there. You can find us on uh, Lemmy, as we mentioned. Uh, but we're also um, out on Matrix. We are. Another, not the same, but similarly federated. Um, and we do our live streams when we do those over on Twitch. And yep. I'm, I'm, I know there's some places that I'm missing. We're... We, Oh yeah, uh, TikTok. Blue sky. Uh, we're out. We're out over there. Oh, that's right. The blue sky. We've got one of them's. Uh, all of the stuff that comes out uh, always ends up on Mastodon and Blue Sky. Though, um, yeah, uh, yeah. So our our short form messages yeah. will always end up there. I'm trying to get them on on Patreon. I don't know why. I'll make an announcement in places like that, and then I'll forget to do it on Patreon, like where it's supposed to be, like where. Yeah. <laughs> where like where I mean, makes... and there's a free tier to Patreon too, by the way. Yes. So if you're not a fan of social media or anything like that, and you just happen to want to follow uh, that kind you, of stuff, I promise I'll get better at posting it there. It's a place to follow along. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, there's um, so they've they've enabled uh, podcast feeding and stuff. Yep. So um, if you don't, I, I don't know why you would be in this situation, but if you just happen to be in this situation, like you're you're still clicking on the play button like a caveman on the Patreon uh, website for the actual show that releases with the rest of the stuff. Um, there's an actual Patreon podcast feed now that you can uh, subscribe yep. to. I've got it titled. Well, actually, the title is different. The title is always different. Um, yeah. Over on on Patreon because I usually set that stuff out before Dan and I have. We don't stamped. even. Have, we haven't even thought about a title yet. Because probably. we're that forward thinking. Right. The the yes. amount of forward thinking in this previous topic out to twenty forty seven, we're the exact opposite of that where uh yeah. we've got like we, we might have four titles sloshing around and we're just like, I can't choose. And then Dan's like, I can't choose. And so we spin the wheel. Sometimes, <laughs> just... yeah. And uh, that's usually like December thirty first, twenty forty six. Yeah, so. yeah, like the <laughs> night before the report is due. It's like, Oh God. Yeah, that's yeah, kinda that's... true. That it happened today. I don't know. I mean, it just, it's it's the way we roll. Uh, you know. So it is. Everything we're talking about is very fresh on the mind because of that. Um, but yeah. So anyway, um, there's a lot of cool features on Patreon. So uh, if if that's for some reason the only where the only place that you follow us, you can actually get the full entire experience just right there. It's all there. 